For Jay, we chose Jacob's Mouse because they're a local band. They, they come from Bury St. Edmunds, John played them. And um, he liked to champion the local bands as much as he could, only if they were good. They had one record that was just so classic. They took the title of it from the notice that was outside the pub where they used to perform, which always amused John enormously. The guy in the pub was pissed off with people from the chip shop parking, so he wrote this very draconian sign saying, no fish shop parking, wheel clamps in use. And we thought it was funny. We met at a swimming race. We got out to get changed, we had a chat. As we were chatting, he put on like a ACDC t-shirt or something. I put on an Iron Maiden one, we're like, oh, you like it, and that was it, yeah, I do. And we were like 11 at the time, so it's quite a rare thing to sort of find other people into heavy metal. And uh, yeah, and then we just, he said, I play guitar. I said, well, I play drums, you know. Well, let's have a little play together. And, that, and he said, oh, my brother plays bass, which you didn't Which I all. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, we didn't discover that till we got together, yeah. We started gigging at kind of the age of 11, basically. We started doing school gigs and stuff. But yeah, at 16, we decided to leave metal behind, probably from just a lot of John Peel. Um, we thought, hang on a minute, there's better stuff out there. Being a successful band was essentially filling the local village hall, you know, and, you, you know, it's kind of difficult to almost sort of think beyond that, but this idea that there was someone like John Peel out there and if you managed to make a record, then it might get played on the radio, and it was an achievable goal. When we sent this record off, we'd sort of, you know, sent a, a letter, a a letter number with on it, it a telephone number on the record, so, yeah, you know, they phoned that, spoke to my mum, who was completely freaked out at sort of talking to the radio, basically. I think she felt that it was talking back to her. Now. <laughs> and, um, and funnily enough, she didn't have, it was asking when we were playing and things, so she didn't have any, any gigs or anything at any so it was all like, oh, sorry. from Jacob's Mouse in session from Bury St Edmunds. I don't know why I keep emphasising that, I suppose, because I live near Bury St Edmunds and I feel quite proud of them, really. The new Nirvana? I think in a rather special way, we're all the new, new Nirvana, don't you? Doing a Peel session was something we'd always dreamed about doing, and, and again, it was this sort of validation of... Well, felt like a validation of what we'd been doing, really. We did want to be a successful underground band, and so... You know, getting on John Peel was like just one of the best things, really. Because at the time, there was no other shows playing any music that we were, you know, making or sort of that sort of style. It's been said over and over and over again. You know, his influence can't be kind of underestimated. You know, it, it was all about the next thing for John. You know, you know the the next band. You know, and the next record and the new parcel of records that arrived was like Christmas morning. The place where we're sitting in now, the, the rehearsal rooms in Bernstein Edmonds, um, John was, was actually going to come and open them. Uh, they opened a couple of weeks after his death, I think. We were a band from Bury, you know, in, in the middle of nowhere, making really incredibly inaccessible music, you know. There are then bands now coming up in Bury thinking, you know, maybe we can do that, maybe we can make a record. This place is as much a part of his legacy as, as anything else, in that the whole kind of cycle is then perpetuating. He actually said a really incredible thing. He said, um, I think sometimes you just you have to dare to be amazed. Mm -hmm.